Hi, good morning. This is uh, Miss Tiffany Parks. I'm here, a teacher at Hunt High School in Wilson, North Carolina. Um, today we have Catherine Ramirez joining us from Donate Life, North Carolina. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Tiffany. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're really excited today. Um, we've had the program come before at our career fair and talk to our kids um, about the Donate Life program. And so we're just so happy to have you today to talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I'm here, you know, representing Donate Life, but also just the nonprofit sector overall. Um, specifically Donate Life North Carolina. We're a small staff, so right now it's five of us. Um, we usually work from home um, and travel, you know, as needed, but like a lot of other uh, nonprofits, we're really, really dependent on our volunteers. So volunteers are really important. Um, really, our mission is to educate and advocate for organ, eye, and tissue donation. Um, so probably if you guys have taken driver's ed, um, you've probably gone over materials that has been provided by us. Um, so we like to, you know, engage everybody before they get their license because most people, they register to, on the organ, eye, and tissue registry when they go and they get their driver's license. And you have that heart on your license, you're a registered donor. Um, but there's also plenty of people who maybe, you know, they're older before you could go and get driver's ed education. Um, they don't know about organ donation or maybe you come from another country and you want to learn how um, organ donation happens in America. And so really uh, we go everywhere, <laughs> basically across the state um, and engage people in their communities. So health fairs um, and their jobs. So sometimes um, people will have us present to their employees um, about organized tissue donation. And we also attend a lot of colleges. So uh, if you go to college and the next, you know, three years, we'll probably see us out there at some point. Um, but sometimes it's not just us out there. A, a really great part of um, uh, being a nonprofit, like I said, as volunteers. So we have a lot of positions for, uh, you know, college students and high school students to prove their leadership and kind of take charge of a project by yourself. Um, so I think that in, col in colleges, it's a lot more popular, but in high school too, we have a lot of kids that they make it their mission to work with us and get the word out in their own community. And we provide them the educational materials and the giveaway items, you know, and you can get an honors cord with us too, if you'd like to do that. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. And also, could it work, could work towards their internship? Absolutely, it could work towards internship. We write recommendation letters all the time. Um, it's just a great volunteer opportunity for you to kind of get to know a lot of people because I think um, most organizations, no matter where you work, most of the time you're going to be talking to a lot of different types of people, not just your coworkers, but specifically when you're um, doing outreach work, when you're trying to uh, engage people into your mission, the whole point is to meet new people and let them know who you are and um, what you're trying to achieve. What's your goal? Um, so it's a lot of learning to talk to people. So that's uh, communication skills orally, but also verbally. You have a lot, I mean, sorry, <laughs> not verbally, um, writing skills. So uh, you need to, you know, practice your email etiquette. You can email me. <laughs> um, just because that is something that you probably are going to have a leg up on your peers if you learn uh, through an internship or volunteering before you start your first job and you kind of learn how to have your email signature and, uh, you know, yeah. Be <laughs> well, I teach that in my Microsoft Word class, um, okay. how to do their signature. I didn't realize that they didn't know how to do it because I just thought like every kid is so tech savvy <laughs> that they all had like their own little emojis and everything done. And then when I was starting to get emails from kids, I was like, like, because their, their email, which I won't disclose how it's formed, but you don't necessarily know who's emailing you. And so I'm like, where's your signature? Like, I have three different, you know, um, classes and the kid has the same name. Uh, an email signature would really come in handy. And so yeah. we um, actually, I spent like a whole day 
showing them how to format it and, and put it up. So you're right. Like those business skills. I mean, even if they're yeah. running a business, this is a volunteer. It looks great on college applications. Yeah. You're doing something for your community because it is a group that does make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, scholarships, opportunities for those community hours. I know that um, our National Honor Society and our National Vocational Honor Society require um, volunteer hours. So, yeah, so this is a great way um, to kind of do that. And this is particularly, um, I think, suited for people who um, like a lot of room individuality because we will help you like I said, with materials and we'll help you with the educational part because of course, if you're gonna be putting together, for example, a registration booth at your school, you need to understand um, what organ donation, eye donation, tissue donation is about, how you can register, the impacts, why it's important. You know, knowing that there's more than 3,000 people in the state of North Carolina alone that are waiting for a life-saving transplant that need this so that they can continue to be with their family members or their loved ones um, is very important. And understanding how that process works is also, you know, the most important thing. Because sometimes, you know, one of the biggest things about our organization is, of course, we want people to register, but at the same time, mostly the most important thing is we want people to be educated so not everybody has to say yes obviously yeah um yeah. but we really want people to understand just the importance of it and how it takes place because it is a very um complex process mm -hmm. and it's hard to understand because most of the time we're not unless we have a family member who's impacted by this um, we're not really thinking about um, this specific issue, but for a lot of people, you know, they live their everyday life um, with, you know, a disease or in some sort of, you know, accident that might have happened that leads them to need, you know, a transplant. Yeah, I mean, I actually um, went to school with someone who, um, who has had to have a kidney transplant and he was in high school when he needed the kidney transplant and um he's had several since then so i mean it's just uh and he's it's a testament to um how it saved his life when we were in school yes and that's the other you know it's it's important to receive those stories and share those stories and also that and it could happen to anybody um and, you know that's the big thing you know children sometimes are born with uh, defects. I think a lot of the time uh, people have a misunderstanding that maybe, oh, they did something to cause, you know, this failure. So liver failure, I know a lot of um, our volunteers that maybe received liver failures, they you know, people think it's related to alcoholism all the time. And that's just not the case. Sometimes you have a a, a disease that kind of yeah. leads it to be like that. So it opens you up to be a bit more empathetic, have those communication skills, um, and, you know, hopefully, uh, you can help change somebody's life. Yeah. I mean, um, my mother-in-law, she had, um, a liver, she had cirrhosis of the liver, but it was, a lot of it was because of medication. Yes. <laughs> People don't realize like large amounts of medication for your entire life can cause, um, liver damage and that you, you know, you won't need the transplant until you're older. Um, but uh you know there's several causes which your organization teaches about um i've used your materials before i think my favorite part um is your facts like uh like myths or facts sections because mm -hmm. i know a lot of the kids um those are always like the questions they want they the first ones they ask you know like will they take them like if i'm alive and like <laughs> those are always the funny ones i'm like no they will yeah you have to be declared legally um, deceased before that occurs. Um, yeah. And so that just, that's a great sheet that, that you could share. Um, and I'll be happy on my website to post um, any links that you have. Also, um, after the kids see this video, they can go there and um, click on the links about it as well if they want to hear more about it. Because they are going to ask them um, when they go to get their driver's license. And if... Yeah if they're not educated on the topic or if they haven't had that discussion with their parents 
because um, yeah. they may say yes, but then their parents may say no. So that's kind of a conversation um, that I know your material is doing another great job of um, how to have that conversation with your parents. Yeah, definitely. I think aside from coming to a point where you feel like you know enough to make that decision, um, the most important thing after that is to speak to your family about it, um, share how you feel, why you feel that way, see how they feel about it. Um, it's one of those things that as you get older, um, those conversations that, you know, maybe are difficult to start, um, you, you learn how to navigate them. You know, it's maybe something that obviously is not, uh, you know, maybe you're not used to right now as a teenager, but it, it's something that is very, you know, mature to talk about with your parents and important. Yeah, it is. So um, let's get into how um, did you get into this job? What was your, um, what was your major in college? So my major was a bit unrelated to this. Uh, I was a government and international politics major um, up in uh, Northern Virginia. I went to George Mason University. Um, but uh, during college, I, and even in high school, I had, you know, ongoing internships, ongoing volunteer opportunities. I grew up in a very, uh, in a family where we volunteered all the time. It was the norm. Uh, and most of my internships had uh, not all of them, but I had probably three or four uh, nonprofits that I worked for, and I really enjoyed the culture of nonprofits. So every organization, every company has their own work culture. Um, usually, if you're going to work for a nonprofit, it's going to be smaller most of the time. Um, there are some very big um, uh, nonprofits. nonprofits out there. Yeah, like we are part of Donate Life America. Which but is we don't, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you have like an umbrella and sometimes there's smaller portions, just like um, the American, you know, Society for Cancer, uh, uh, you know, you might have little branches like that. Yeah. But you're, we're not necessarily working with everybody that falls under it. We just work with our team and then we connect, you know, every once in a while um, with other Donate Life teams. Um, but really, um, every time I've worked at a nonprofit, it's been usually under 20 people, pretty tight knit. Um, and you're just kind of united for a very specific cause. Um, what I will say that um, I think is really important for the students to know is that, you know, the non nonprofit industry compared to the for-profit industry, there is a lot of variety in both of those. So if you work in a nonprofit, you don't necessarily have to work you know, at an education-based, health-based nonprofit like I do. There's nonprofits where attorneys work. That's where um, one of the internships I had, it was an attorney's office, but they offered legal services for people who maybe did not have the uh, same income as other people, but still needed those services. So there, you could be an attorney and still work for a nonprofit. You know, you could um, also be an accountant and still work for a nonprofit. So you can go into these industries um, that maybe, you know, you, you have your choice of going into the for-profit sector or the nonprofit sector. So there's um, even, you know, IT nonprofits that help um, specifically nonprofits. <laughs> so for example, we made a, a video a couple months ago and the people that we worked with our video was a nonprofit, you know, their IT and they have their cameras and all that stuff, but it's just the approach is a little bit different um, you know, at the, really the outcome is that you're, um, not making your every, you know, action or your plan or how you run the company. The goal is not revenue. Um, it's more of impact. It's more about meeting that organizational goal of, you know, what your mission is. So that's kind of the difference. And also, you know, because the revenue is not, the ultimate goal when you're in a nonprofit, the income's going to be a little bit different. So you also have to keep that in mind um, if you would like to work for a nonprofit. So there's a lot of, you know, things that you're going to weigh out um, when it comes to your job search. But again, it's not just limited to, you know, humanities type of work. It, it also has, you know, uh, science and uh, math and IT um, stuff that you can be involved in and be interested in and work in the nonprofit sector. So 
I know the answer, but for the kids, where does the um, where does the income come from that helps pay mm -hmm. the employees? Yeah, so income, most of, uh, in just any nonprofit you're ever going to be in, part of your job is, you know, wearing several hats. And one of those hats, you know, by hats, I mean responsibilities. One of those responsibilities that's going to be going on most of the time is fundraising. You're always going to be fundraising in one way or another. So you're going to be asking for support from people who um, support your mission. But also, you're going to be writing grants. So if you're a you love writing, you're a great writer, and maybe you want to have a job in writing, but you know, uh, maybe you're also a creative writer, but a, a way that to really kind of secure an income aside from creative writing, and um, you know, that's not you know, necessarily teaching or going out and writing plays right away, um, or you like math, and you like writing together, <laughs> right. writing would probably be a good choice for you. Yeah. Uh, most of the time you're going to have a grant writer or somebody called a development, you know, manager, associate uh, development professional, which is really going to, their whole role is to kind of, uh, you know, write grants, get, you know, people to donate money because there are organizations that their sole purpose is to um, give money to organizations who need it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of big businesses, um, yeah. I hate to say it, but a lot of big businesses use it as a tax write-off. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, a lot of them do. And so the great thing is you also would need somebody that is researching. So mm -hmm. also you need your researcher and your grant writer um, to work for your nonprofit. Um, and some people love event planning and fundraising. Yeah. And so like if you love to to do that. I mean, that's even another opportunity um, to talk and socialize and, and throw events and coordinate stuff to help get the funds. Um, some people like to do that. Absolutely. And event planning, I think, is one of the fun parts of my job, too. Um, <laughs> just because you get to have something to look forward to, you know, every couple months that you're going to attend. That's exciting. So we have a 5K that we do every year, you know, a 5K, 10K, and one mile, all in one. And it's fun for all of us as a team um, to attend it and be a part of it and see all these people that, like, support, you know, what you're doing and kind of meeting, uh, you know, people that might be in contact with you, but you don't see them all the time. So right. that's kind of exciting. And also galas, you know, we have, uh, we've had our gala and you get to dress up and it's kind of fun and you like know, prom <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of like prom like an adult prom that's kind of the closest you get after <laughs> after you graduate um so events like that are very exciting and if you are into event coordinating uh you probably would enjoy that i mean yeah. it's a lot again it's 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 a lot of communication with a lot of people and reaching out but um yeah it's very fun yeah, so I mean, really, you got your degree, you said, in, in politi government politics? Yes, government I mean, and international politics. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it, that kind of goes when you're trying to raise money, um, <laughs> being able to be in that kind of um, field and be able to understand what's going on and how to talk to people, like you said earlier. I mean, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't too far of a field. No. Um, and it's a lot of, uh, you know, administration, yeah. type of work, um, learning how to, you know, read a budget. That's something yeah, that you also that's big. Learn. And um, so for our kids, um, do you have to have a degree to get into this? I mean, I know we said the internships, but like to be employed in the future, would you recommend, like, do you know people with a two-year Mm -hmm. I would say um, it depends on what industry you're trying to go into, right? So um, if you're going to do nonprofit work in general, I would say plenty of people, um, you know, probably you can get a two-year degree, <clears throat> I'm sorry, or even a high school dip diploma and work in the nonprofit industry, but it's going to be probably a longer um, climb, right? Yeah. So you might start off a little bit simpler, like the... Um, a, you know, uh, administrative person in your office, you know, kind of assisting everybody who needs um, um, just administrative st stuff done. And maybe then you'll kind of learn what you like in that, in that office. And you'll be like, I would like to be 
this person, you know, mm -hmm. in the office later. Yeah, but then do the next year, yeah. Exactly. But you'll probably have to do some learning from there to get to that goal. Either if it's in the organization or maybe they'll recommend you go out and you, you know, achieve a certain certification or something like that. But obviously, you know, you can't, <laughs> you're not going to be the head attorney of a <laughs> uh, nonprofit organization, which you admire, <clears throat> unless you go and you get, you yeah. know, uh, your, you know, you pass the bar and you can come back. Yeah. So it depends on kind of what your long term goals are. Um, but also, you know, you could be a, a volunteer coordinator, um, but you're also going to have that, you know, learning curve. I don't think you could just, and turn to volunteer coordinator position without uh, at least, you know, a two year degree or something, um, because you're also gonna need a little bit of experience. You're gonna have to be able to prove you can work with people. You're gonna have to prove that you know how to, uh, you know, talk to a group of people and communicate really well what needs to be done. And kind of being, you know, important, the most important thing is you have to be kind. If you're going to be a volunteer coordinator, people are volunteering um, their time to be with you. They don't have to be there and you need them. So yeah. um, you're going to have to at least prove some experience, maybe working at a high school, um, you know, with your peers or even better, you know, if you were part of the Girl Scouts and maybe you helped. Uh, of young children during the day camp, yeah. right? So if you were in charge of a day camp or something like that. Um, but there are roles, but ultimately I would say that in the long term, you're probably gonna have to not necessarily go back to school, um, but probably some certification or training along the way. And sometimes um, nonprofits help you get to that. So sometimes a nonprofit uh, for example, for my organization, they put away a certain amount of money for your professional development. So if you would like to join a, you like social media, you've been doing the social media work for the organization. If you want to maybe connect with other people that um, are doing marketing and PR, they'll pay for you to go to a conference to, you know, learn some more, connect with other people who are doing the same thing. And um, I also think some states, uh, don't quote me on this, but um, if you have student loans, um, you would choose to work for a nonprofit. Some, some places you get a certain type of forgiveness for your loans, maybe not all of it, but they will take some of it um, off. But it, it might vary by state, but that might be something that we can look into and you know, maybe put a link at the end of this. Um, but ultimately, sorry, I forgot to answer the main question, last question. Really the reason I work with Donate Life is because I moved to North Carolina um, and I, I grew up in Northern Virginia. I got married, my husband's in the military. I'm at a new place and I had just donated my kidney to my dad. So that's the big connection for me. Um, I donated my kidney to my dad um, when I was in college. And when I saw that they needed somebody out here, I thought it would be a really great fit and it worked out really well. Oh, Leo. Well, good for you. I think that the um, internship idea, and like you said, you know, volunteering and, and, and getting that experience, I think will help the kids get more ideas of like, if that's something they want to do and what area to go into. And I really think they should start in high school and set up booths with their peers, because that will make it easier if they're around their friends mm -hmm. um, to help promote something you know, to some people they already know. <laughs> and then that would, um, so doing it to people they already know, and then maybe they'll feel more comfortable um, uh, doing that in the long run, like volunteering more. And then when they get to college, they could do more. And then, like you said, like then maybe they could find um, a futuristic job. I mean, you don't know something, and that's why I do this. Um, these videos is because you really don't know about things unless you talk to people who do it. Um, you know, I didn't know what a lot of jobs were when I was like 16 years old and trying to decide to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to go for. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I had no idea what half the degrees were. Like I saw them on a piece of paper and I was like, I don't know what that is or that is or that is. Um, and I certainly didn't know what a nonprofit was. 
I mean, I knew it didn't make money. <laughs> you know, by, by definition, I know what not profit means, but I didn't actually know like how the people got paid until I like got older and I started writing grants myself mm -hmm. um, for my classroom. And then I was like, oh, okay. So they write grants and that's how they get their money. And like, they have to continuously um, write these grants because they have mm -hmm. like, you know, years on the, con but honestly, I didn't know that until I like dug into it. So I think the big takeaway today for our kids, Catherine, is, is you're a testimony to like, you, you don't, you may think you're going one direction and, and you start volunteering and you realize like, wow, this is amazing. Um, I really enjoy it here. You like, you know, you like the small community um, feeling, which a lot of kids in Wilson, it's, it is a small community. Everybody knows everybody. Um, and so, you know, that's comforting in your job place. And so that's just yeah. great um, testimony. So um, did you have anything else you wanted to share today? I just, I had, mm -hmm. um, I asked all my good questions, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah, I was just, you know, kind of hitting on the last kind of points that is a good takeaway. You know, if you like very collaborative environment, if you like um, learn, maybe, you know, not staying with a niche particular um, job uh, every day. A nonprofit's pretty good. Things are always changing. You're always going to be doing um, a little bit of everything. You know, um, like I said, you're always going to be to some extent helping people who are fundraising. You're always probably going to be looking forward to another event to attend um, aside from your reg regular job. And if you like meeting new people, um, this is definitely um, something that you might and you'll probably enjoy. And if you don't like meeting new people, this is definitely a place that you can, you know, connect with and you will meet new people. And I highly recommend it. I think one of the hardest things when you're young is that fear of talking to strangers, yeah. especially, um, you know, adult strangers. Um, and this is a great, you know, way to get off with that fear you'll you know even not necessarily my organization probably other organizations they'll tell you what to say they'll they'll educate you they'll train you on what you, needs to be said and uh, that'll increase your confidence when you're talking to other people um and it's it's awesome that you can do that so by the time that you're going to job interviews in the future um you're going to be more comfortable um talking to people you don't know and you'll be able to kind of find your voice um, talking to, you know, adults and stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. Um, again, you're from Donate to Life NC, and we're going to put those um, that website and more information um, that you share with us for the kids um, on my teacher website. So please look at that, and um, thank you so much for coming today. Yeah, I appreciate it. I hope you guys are all staying safe and you know getting back to miss parks over here responding <laughs> to her <laughs> to her emails um but i appreciate it have a great day thank, thank you. you so much bye